What's happening everyone? Welcome back to The Shed. My name is John McGrath and this is part 13 of this custom guitar build. Now in the last episode we had just shaped and sanded the body. I was waiting on some tools to arrive so I could start the fretboard. I have them now so I have the radius blocks and the guitar fret saw. So what I'm hoping to do is get a fretboard out of this piece of cherry. Now in part 10 or 11 I think I was staining this and I put a bit of oil on it just to see if it would work. Um, I'm still not 100% sure 100% sure whether I'm going to use this or not but what I am going to do now is mark it out cut it for frets and shape it and radius it and if I'm happy at the end of that process that this is going to look good on this guitar we're going to use it um, if not I might get a piece of ebony or a piece of rosewood something like that and use that instead but I would like to use this and see if it works so the first thing I'm going to do I get you in for a closer look is we're going to mark out this for our frets our nut position our start of a fretboard and our end of fretboard we're going to cut and slot the frets which should be interesting and then we're going to radius it and hopefully uh, yeah by the end of this we have a fretboard let's get on it okay I have you zoomed a little bit there so this is our potential fretboard blank I've already started marking it out so that's the end of my fretboard and this is the start of my nut so I just want to take the thickness of my nut now and mark out for my nut slot and then all my measurements from my frets begin from that mark so you measure from your first fret from the back of your nut or the front of your nut whichever depending on what way you're looking at it um, but from this side of our nut is where we take our first measurement from our fret and for all our frets all right so it's from where the string makes contact with the nut which is the front edge of the nut here or the back edge of the nut depending on what way you're looking at it so hopefully that makes sense. Now, I have a fret position calculator open on the laptop. I'll leave links in the description to where you can find that. That gives me my position. It gives me my nut to fret to each fret um, measurement. And it gives me my fret to fret measurement. Now we're going to go with the nut to fret measurement and use that the whole way down the board. Because if we make a mistake on any of these frets, obviously we'll have a knock on effect if we use a fret to fret measurement the whole way down the board so we don't want to do that so we're going to go with our nut to fret and mark that each time so that's the first thing let me just get this open here now so i can see what we're doing right so i have it in millimeters this is a 25.5 inch scale length which is technically the fender scale length, scale length i suppose that's 647 millimeters and um you can do this either in inches, imperial or in metric, it's up to you. The, the fret calculator will do with both of them and you can work it whatever way you want then. I'm going to work in millimetres. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just mark out my nut and I'll mark my first fret. And I'll probably fast forward this down the board because you don't need to see me mark every single fret. You get what I'm going to do here. So I just want to get the thickness of my nut. around 3.3 mil okay so let's mark that there and, and the edge of this board is flat and square so i can square all my um, lines off this my engineering square that's the intention anyway and i'm using a mechanical pencil just because it's a thinner tip and it gives me a bit more accuracy so there we go now i need to measure from my first nut to my first fret which is 36.53 from the nut 36.53 from my nut so that puts me there 36 and a half now how exactly i see half a mil i'm not quite sure but there you go Right, so we have the end of our fretboard, that's our nut slot, and that's our first fret. And I'm just going to mark all these now the whole way down this board. And um, yeah, we'll jump back in then when it comes to slotting this, and hopefully we don't mess it up. Right, let's do it. So my second fret then is 70.665 mil. Okay, let's do that, 70.
Okay guys, what I decided to do there was just to leave the ruler in place, not to keep moving it each time, and mark out all my frets, and then square them all across. And hopefully we should be good at that. Okay, so that's all 24 frets marked. Um, now I'm just going to line it up my guitar, mark the end of my fretboard. I will need a center line on this before I can cut it out. And um, I'm just going to check the measurements on this side to make sure they correspond with this side. And then we get back to it. Right, so the next thing to do is to put in my center line on this, because again, everything off our guitar is based off our center line, so I need to put my center line into my fretboard. Now, the way I'm going to do that is the widest part of my fretboard is at the end of the guitar here, that's 56 mil. So what I'm going to do is mark in 56 mil. I'm going to allow myself about five mil of waste on the edge of this board. Um, just for when I'm cutting it, I can run that through the, the over the plane or the jointer. And uh, just allow myself five mil just in case there's any mistakes or I get any snipe or anything like that, which can cause problems. So I'm just going to mark in there. I'm going to come in a few mil from the edge of that, about five mil I think should be good. I'm just going to mark my 56 from that then, just the width of the end of my board. So bring this back down to 28 which is half 56. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. I know it's going to be a little bit hard to see, but... Hopefully you guys can see that. I'm not sure if you can. It's a little hard to see with the colour of the board and to see the pencil lines, but they're all my frets now. Um, start the fretboard, nut slot, all the frets, and this is the end of my fretboard here. So that's 24 frets all marked out. Now I got to I've got to slot this now. So what I might do is actually cut this on the bandsaw close to my lines. Um, I finish it on the, the planer, I think. And I'll slot it. So, something like that is what we're going to do next. Right, so we're going to cut this thing out in the bandsaw now. And the approach I'm going to take is I'm going to cut off the end at my nut side. Then I'm going to cut it close to the end of my fretboard. I'm going to leave myself some waste either end. Then I'm going to um, cut close to the finish line of my fretboard. Not right on it, but close to it. And... Um, yeah, that's the procedure. So a bit of noise now, and uh, here we go. Let's get on this. you should be able to see that there so I've had a go on the off cut piece that I cut off the fretboard blank this had all the same lines on it and I've just been practicing with the fret saw and it's not too bad um, I use a double sided or du a piece of double sided sticky tape just to um, stick it to this piece of oak um, just for something to grip to and to stop it moving around and then it's just a case of take your time keep your saw nice and straight and um, I'm not going to go to full depth what I want to get is just Go down a couple of mil and um, to get the start lines in it and then I'm going to radius it so all these lines will still be there and then I can put them to their final depth when it's on the guitar and I'm hammering in my frets. So I got all the slots cut for now. So that's actually not too bad. Slight little mistake. Um, just a bare little wobble here on this fret. But I don't think it would be too detrimental. Um, 
So yeah, I think this is going to work. So that's what I'm going to do again. So I just have to be careful, I suppose, taking it off the double-sided sticky tape because you've weakened the fretboard by cutting all this stuff in it. And if you pull it up, you could snap it. And this stuff gets quite a grip, so that's just something I need to be aware of. So yeah, so we need to get it off like that. And um, yeah, let's see. I might need another double-sided piece. Yeah, I do. So I'm going to get another piece of double-sided sticky tape on this. And we are going to slot this board. Okay, ran out of memory there, so the camera cut off, but um, our fretboard is slotted now, so um, it's going to be a case of radius this thing now, so I'm going to have to build a jig to run my radius block in, and that keeps this perfectly on the center line, and the radius block perfectly center over this. So that's the plan now, and um, I'm going to use these two pieces of oak, I have another piece of this over here to do that. So yeah, let's get on that. Right guys, I'm going, to, I'm going to make a simple jig just with some double sided sticky tape, these two oak blanks which are perfectly straight, um, just in order to run my um, uh, radius block up between. Right? So it's just going to be a case of, we get these either side, I use two radius blocks because they're, they're the exact same thickness, um, just a, a double sided sticky tape these two down and then we'll have something that we can just run our radius block up and down on. What I'll do then is I'll, I'll fix my um, fretboard exactly in the center. I'll use my laser to give me a straight center line through this. I'll line up um, my fretboard perfectly. I'll double sided sticky tape this down. Then I can run my radius block with my sandpaper in it up and down the fretboard. So that should work. Should be, in theory, should be nice and simple. So let's get on that. And um, one thing when you're, if you're using double sided sticky tape, and you're sticking your fretboard down as you're cutting it. Just remember when you're peeling it off, this stuff gets a fam famous grip, so you can actually snap your fretboard. Remember, you've weakened it now with all these slots in it, so you can it li will just literally just snap. So be careful with that. The brand I'm using is um, Everbuild. It's Mammoth tape. It's pretty decent stuff. It gets a great grip, and um, it's relatively easy then to roll and peel off the timber after you're finished with it. So, yeah. Let's get on that, let's build this jig and let's get this thing radius. trim my sandpaper exactly to the width of my block obviously because the sandpaper sticking over the edge won't run on my jig so we're ready to start doing this now so hopefully this should work this um, up and down just until I get all the way into my center point once I start hitting my center point then I should have the radius should be in my board 
I'm just then taking my or taking care to make sure that I'm not slightly putting more pressure on this side or on this side. Um, I'm just checking to make sure that I'm even um, and that the radius is not that I'm not tilted too much this way or too much this way. Get me and curving it off this way or this way. Now I know some fretboards do can flatten out or can curve away from at the top. Um, some people like it like that. It's kind of a compound this way. Um, you can do that, there's nothing wrong with it, um, but I'm going to keep this a 9.5 radius uh, even at this end and then I'm going to work it back to a flatter radius at this end, that's the plan. So I'm going to work this end a little bit more and then I'm going to use the 12 or the 14 inch radius back here just to radius the back half of the fretboard and hopefully then that should give me a compound radius where I can you can play your lead stuff up here and it's easy to fret. Um, your open cords and stuff up this end of the neck. That's the plan. So let me continue on with that. Right guys, that's the fretboard radius. Um, we just finished it off with some 120 grit on the radius blocks. I use a 9.5 up the high end of the neck and we use a 12 then down the lower end of the neck. Just And we blended the two of them together. So we should have a flatter radius on this end and uh, a more rounded radius up this end of the neck which should make playing a little bit more easy and a little bit more comfortable. We'll see, this is all experimentation. But um, yeah, these are just the fret radius blocks from Crimson Guitars. I did an unboxing and a review of these already. Check it out, these are solid beach blocks and they work. This is my first time using them and they do the job and they do the job well, so there you go. So now I need to get this thing, I'm gonna take this thing apart. As you can see, The double sided sided tape gets a, a fairly powerful hold, so we need to be careful now when we're taking off this fretboard because it is quite possible that we'd snap it. It is quite possible. God. Right. That's our oak blocks out of the way. So now we need to get this one. So I'll just try and pry it from the side just to get it to. Nice and easy, just even pressure on it. It would be very easy to snap this now. There we go. There we go. So obviously don't lift from one end and pull it up. Get it from the side and just keep the pressure on it until it gives. Because, uh, yeah, you would snap this no problem now. I'm actually liking how it looks like that. I don't think I'll stain it. I think I'll just oil it. And um, that should be good. So it's time now, I think, to glue this fretboard to this guitar. And then we can finish shaping the neck and finish shaping the fretboard. So I think we shall get on that. Right, so guys, we're getting ready to glue on this fretboard onto our guitar. Um, now, my battery could die any moment here, so let me just take you through quickly what I'm going to do, just in case it does go. I'm going to put in four locator pins, just to make it easier for this to clamp on and not move around. So I'm just going to use some, some nails. I'm just going to tap them in where they won't be seen, and I'm going to nip them off right close to the top. So they'll literally just be little divots sticking up that I can use then to push this down in place. That will give me four locator pins then. So for when I'm clamping it, when I'm gluing, I'll be able to um, locate my center line quickly. So I'm gonna mark it first with my laser. So again, bring back in the laser. You probably won't be able to see that now, maybe you will. Um, I'm gonna get my laser on my center line of my guitar. And I have it marked here and here on my fretboard. Hopefully you can see that. Um, that's what I'll do. So I'll dry clamp it first get my um, four locator pins in place with my center line and then we shall be ready for gluing. Now I'm just going to mask off this truss rod while I'm spreading the glue and as soon as the glue is spread then I'll pull off the masking tape because we don't want to get glue down our truss rod channel because if we lock our truss rod in place obviously it can't move, it can't bow and bend so we can't straighten and put relief into our neck. It could cause problems down the line so we don't want that to happen. So first things first I'm just going to tack in a couple of these um, into our neck and nip them off. And uh, yeah, hopefully, like I say, this battery lasts and doesn't run out.
Right guys, I've just compressed the fretboard onto our four pins so you can see it's actually held on there. Um, so we're onto our four locating pins. So that's, that'll really help me when it comes to uh, gluing this up to stop it moving around. So um, what we're going to do is we're just going to dry clamp it, uh, make sure that my clamping procedure is good, and then we're going to glue this thing. And then, yeah, it's almost onto the home straight then. So this is exciting times ahead. So see, it's nice and easy to pull off our, our um, fretboard. And then we can just locate it back onto our four pins, push it down, and uh, there it is. It's lined up for us, so we know we're good. So that's a, just a nice little simple tip for you guys. Okay, so I'm just going to just rough up the underneath this because it is fairly smooth. It's after been um, sanded and planed, so it has a fairly smooth finish. So I just want to make sure the glue has. It can bind to the wood. Obviously, we do not want our fretboard to delaminate. Turn off that laser now. We don't need it. So I'm just we can just scratch that, and then the back of our fretboard as well. on tree again so it's pretty potent stuff so um, we get this on spread it then we pull off our masking tape we put some down the edges of our fretboard use our locating pins to clamp it we press it and we clamp it and uh, hopefully the battery doesn't die in the middle of this but it's, you've seen me glue stuff before so it's pretty straightforward part 13 of this guitar build um, that was the fretboard done we have it radiused slotted glued on it was a bit of a rush there towards the end but we're running out of battery and we're running and the glue was going off so we had to move quick but uh, hopefully you found it interesting and hopefully you learned something from it I know I did um, so hit like hit subscribe it helps me out a lot any comments you have for me just leave them below and I will get back to you I'll leave links in the description below for all the gear that I'm using so where you can find it too and uh, yeah, this is probably the last time I'm using this camera phone and mic. So I have a new camera coming, a DSLR and a new shotgun uh, microphone. So we should have better audio and video from all following on videos from this. So that's it. I've got to get out of this shed now because it's late. And if I don't get out now, I'll probably be divorced. So I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take it easy.